very much for the for the invitation. Um, uh, I think that uh, technology um, in higher education uh, is a must today. Uh, it's not an option which we have, but it is really something which we need to embrace. But um, I see in, in my work and the studies we are doing that uh, it is not really about technology. It is really about a culture shift. It is about a different thinking of higher education, a different thinking about the relationship between um, students and uh, teachers. And that is the background against which we were actually starting uh, the research project which I'm going to talk to you about today. And it's not just one project, it is really a series of projects because it is about the question, what is coming in the end? What is behind technology? What is behind uh, digital um, transformation of higher education? And in all discussions which we are leading with professors and with students, uh, and especially also with um, uh, companies, uh, uh, the labor market uh, actors, uh, we are always hearing one thing, and that is students in the future need different skills. They need to be able to take perspectives. They need to be able to be creative. They need to be able to understand intercultural um, collaborations. Uh, they need uh, self-organization. We want them to be uh, the, the initiators of innovation in our organizations. Uh, and we would like um, that they are very, very well able to understand differences, um, differences between uh, uh, the employees, their colleagues, but also differences in the societies they are living in. So, um, and all these new goals, all these new objectives, this what we call future skills, seem to be the end, the end objective of the digital agenda of higher education. So it is really about a new thinking, a new paradigm uh, of educating students. Uh, that is the path on which uh, we are. And this task is so big that, like in this picture, we always feel that we are really stuck uh, and are not able to move anymore. Next slide, please. So it's less about technology, it is more about changing the mindset. Next slide. Next slide. Um, what I've talked about is what we call the changing master narrative. Uh, we have talked a, a lot of times, and we are still talking actually in uh, our conferences, in discussions at home in our universities, and I'm also sure you are talking about uh, how to use technology. And it's not so friendly always. It's not so user-friendly. We are not arrived at a stage where technology is just like the air we are breathing or water which is running out of the tap when we are turning the tap. But the narrative, what we can say is the narrative is changing from using technology um, to discussing the future of the university. Next slide. Um, it is really a little bit, uh, some people say, a race between technology and education. Uh, sometimes technology is in the foreground, sometimes education is in the foreground. Uh, and my um, request to all of you is to really think that we as the university stakeholder group, those who are working in the universities and the higher education institutions, we need to be the ones driving this kind of change and winning this race, actually, that it is really about technology uh, and not about, uh, really about education, sorry, and not about uh, technology. Next slide, please. Um, 
If we look at it from a bigger picture perspective, we can also see that what we are witnessing today with the digital revolution is something which is really hard to understand and where we are not yet arrived at a position uh, in which we can uh, fully see what's happening. Um, this guy, um, Dirk Becker, is a sociologist and he's always comparing our current times um, with other epochs of history. For example, the history epoch when the book printing was invented. Suddenly, mass information could be distributed and that changed the entire society, that changed the way of our thinking, that changed the way we educated, that changed everything. We communicated with each other. The expectations of within families and societal institutions were changed. And he is saying, we are again at such a profound step today with the digital revolution, and yet we cannot see what's going to be in the end, what's coming after it. Next slide, please. So it's all about emergence. Emergence is this wonderful concept, which is really talking about the situation that you cannot understand and determine the future by understanding the past any longer. But this is the uh, real uh, issue which we are uh, usually trying to do. We are usually trying to linearly understand what's going to happen in the future from analyzing the past. In the future, we know uh, we are living in a, in a VUCA world, in a volatile and uncertain uh, world. Um, and we need to equip students for this world. And emergence is a very important concept which we try to operationalize by this uh, four dimensions of uh, VUCA. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. I'm jumping a bit uh, to tell you directly about our next skills uh, study. Um, the study is uh, downloadable at nextskills.org. Uh, next month, we are going to relaunch this website and then you find detailed explanation of the 17 future skills we have developed for higher education. You will find uh, our book in English, our book in German, uh, and a report which is already published there, uh, and also what we call a field book, so a practice book uh, of organizations which are writing about how do they put future skills in practice for their employees and for higher education. Next slide, please. Of course, we did a lot of analysis of future skills approaches. And since 30 years, there's research about what we can today call future skills. Back then, it was called graduate attribute research. Uh, then we had a, a key competence uh, uh, term. We had the term 21st century skills. And today we are talking about future skills. Next slide, please. Next slide. I will uh, send the slides to the organizers so you can download them also and have a look or just download the report, which is all documenting what I'm telling you today. Uh, we had a multi-method design so we were working qualitatively with interviews and quantitatively. Next slide, please. Next slide. And this is pretty much the result. Um, our material was resulting in what we call skill profiles. Skill profiles are uh, containers, are areas, uh, of competencies. And we could identify 17 of such uh, skill profiles in our, our work and we were defining them uh, and uh, were uh, analyzing them. And for each of these profiles, we are stating the re reference competencies, uh, but also we are stating 
uh, what students actually need to be able to do uh, when wanting to demonstrate uh, such a competence. Um, and amongst them, without going into detail very much, amongst them you find things like self-initiative, autonomy, self-management, uh, but also um, the need and motivation uh, for achievement, ethical competence, uh, and things like that. Next slide, please. We were not stopping here. We were also thinking about how can we structure them, actually. We were finding that uh, when we went back to um, uh, an old, used concept of education, actually, we could employ this concept to structure our skills, our um, portfolio of 17 skills. So we were employing this because we were thinking that Every education is a development of the relation of the learner with himself or herself. So you're learning something about you, you're developing. But also, you're not just learning about yourself, you're also learning about an object. So for example, mathematics or accounting or something like that. And also you're learning about your social, societal environment, the world as we call it, and the organization. So every act of learning is actually a development of such of these relations. And we were using that to employ it, to structure the skills around these uh, three different dimensions. Next slide, please. This is how it looks like, basically. Next slide, please. And we are currently developing such a skill finder on the web where you can go and click on a skill and then you will get the definition. And we are also trying to present good practice examples, how to engage students into meaningful learning exercises to develop these skills. Next slide, please. Next slide. And what we also found actually is that the importance of uh, future skills is coming from three developments. The first development is that the importance of the individual person is increasing more and more. The ability to individually develop um, uh, your own uh, skill portfolio is developing more and more. The second one is that um, uh, the relation that, um, 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 that skills uh, are more and more shifting from knowledge orientation, which we as uh, higher education institutions are very good at to convey knowledge to our students. Uh, and this is shifting from knowledge to more creative skills for to design skills students in the future and today actually already are more and more asked to come up with new um, solutions to come up with innovation to come up with ideas which were not there before and to not just restrict their activity to applying solutions which they have learned before but to really find new solutions for new fields. And also the issue of criticizing and reflecting, of taking perspectives uh, is more important in the future uh, than it is today. And then also a third big shift, uh, apart from this shift of the individual becoming very, very important and the shift in um, uh, shift from knowledge to uh, design and innovation. The third big shift is that uh, in organizations also, we can see that uh, future employees, they will not receive external requirements so much any, uh, anymore, but they will be um, in a position where they have to act more and more self-organized. Uh, they will have less to apply solutions, but they will have to develop new solutions. Uh, and 
Um, also, we can see that there is a shift from hierarchical structures to network structures, which changes again uh, the skill pot, the, the skills uh, which uh, employees uh, are needing. Coming to my last slide now, because my time uh, is up. Uh, this is what you can see is the triple helix um, uh, model, which we developed uh, and which we are now taking further into defining learning activities for higher education uh, courses. And the underlying rationale is that uh, it is important to develop all three dimensions in order to equip students in the future with the ability to act in contexts which they have not yet known and where they are potentially unprepared for. Because the future through the, the development of emergence and uh, a world of uncertainty and volatility will put them into more and more situations which we as higher education institutions cannot prepare them for. So that's my final word to you. Um, if you're interested in the work we are doing, you can uh, go to the website, which you saw on the previous slide, nextskills.org, and download uh, the reports. Thank you very much.